Hey, it is 5.30, and we'll call our meeting to order for Monday, November 26th. Carl, roll call, please. Council Member Remley. Here. Ronane. Here. Lundsman. Here. Slate Hansen. Here. Johnson. Here. Bunsness. Here. Olson. Here. Rux. Here. Mayor Leeson. Here. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And could we get a motion to approve last week's minutes? So moved. Second. Motion second. Johnson, second by Slate Hansen. If there are no changes, all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. That brings us to what has become a uh, very enjoyable annual event for us here. Melissa White with the Exchange Club. Uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor Leveson. Thank you, council members, for the time this evening. Well, most people in the community of Aberdeen recognize the Exchange Club as the flag people. Our mission is to serve in unity to make our communities better places to live. The pillars or foundations upon which the National Exchange Club is built are Americanism, youth, and community service. Before I present the awards this evening, I first want to say thank you to the men and women who serve in our community's police and fire rescue departments. We unfortunately live in a time where social media is quick to judge, usually without all the facts. Not only does our country continue to face more difficult challenges, but so do the individuals in these departments who protect our community every day. The challenges our police officers and firefighters face today are not the same as they were 30 years ago, but what should never what should have never changed is the respect and gratitude that these individuals deserve. I know there are other organizations in Aberdeen who, res who recognize the police and firefighters for their service, and the Exchange Club greatly appreciates the assistance the department supervisors give in preparing the nominations. This is the fourth year I've had the privilege of coordinating the, the award, and I think I'm finally to the point where getting an email from Chief McNeil isn't so intimidating. <laughs> Earlier today, we had the privilege of recognizing the extraordinary service of two individuals in the presence of their family, supervisors, and colleagues. We thank the City Council for your time to recognize these gentlemen publicly this evening. Officer Jordan Majeski has been with the Aberdeen Police Department since September 26, 2016. Officer Majeski has prior experience as a dispatcher as well as an officer for the Mobridge Police Department. Officer Majeski became a school resource officer for the Aberdeen Middle Schools in 2017. According to Be Dr. Becky McGuffin, excuse me, Becky Guffin, the Aberdeen School District Superintendent, Officer Majeski is loved in the schools. Officer Majeski's daily duties are divided between Holgate and Simmons Middle Schools, and he balances their needs very well. In March, Officer Majeski was photographed shooting hoops with some of the students, and this is just another indication of how he interacts with the students within the schools. As the school resource officer for the middle schools, he is the primary investigator of child abuse and child welfare complaints for the department. These complaints can come from any of the elementary or middle schools. Officer Majeski always puts these investigations in front of his own needs. He often stays late, or comes in early to work on them to ensure they are completed and the children's needs are met. Sergeant Tony Bisbee recently received an email in which a local prosecutor was complimenting Officer Majeski on a case he had worked on. Officer Majeski is also an active member, excuse me, active mentor in the Aberdeen Police Department Explorer Program. This program is another youth-oriented activity in which young people get an opportunity to see what police officers do for a living and to shadow them at work. Officer Majeski is a positive influence on them in his role as a mentor. Officer Majeski's position is a busy one and he often shoulders a heavy workload. He does this without complaint. He is dependable, self-motivated, and self-reliant and brings a great attitude to the schools and to the Aberdeen Police Department. On behalf of the Exchange Club of Aberdeen, it is my honor to present the 2018 Law Enforcement Officer of the Year Award to Officer Jordan Majeski for his outstanding service to the citizens of the City of Aberdeen.
Since firefighter EMT Jeff Stoltenberg began his career in April 2017, firefighter Stoltenberg has displayed many qualities of leadership. He is always willing to teach and guide new hires on the expectations, operations, and culture of Aberdeen Fire Rescue. Jeff's guidance pl plays a significant role in assisting new staff to have a positive career and will help Aberdeen Fire Rescue build a solid foundation of highly skilled firefighters. Firefighter Stoltenberg always comes to work with a positive attitude. Regardless of the task, call type, or assignment, Jeff completes them with, all with professionalism, on time, and very detailed. His positive attitude is one that sets a good example and creates a fun environment to be in. <coughs> Firefighter Stoltenberg rapidly expanded his career, being used in many positions. This includes as a firefighter, emergency medical technician, fire apparatus operator, and specialty courses to include technical rescue and hazardous materials. Jeff does not hesitate to fill any of these roles. He has set out to be proficient in all areas and constantly studies and trains. It is easy to see that Jeff strives for excellence within himself. Firefighter Stoltenberg has served with the South Dakota National Guard from 2010 to 2018. Jeff completed a tour deployment to Afghanistan, and during his military time, Jeff served as a combat engineer, then reclassified to a firefighter specialist. When Jeff is off duty, he often spends it with his wife and two young children. Jeff also enjoys the outdoors, especially hunting, fishing, and helping on the family farm. Firefighter Stoltenberg displays all of the qualities of a leader and a great firefighter EMT for Aberdeen Fire Rescue. Jeff has a great deal of pride in all areas of his career. On behalf of the Exchange Club of Aberdeen, it is our honor to present the 2018 Firefighter of the Year Award to Firefighter EMT, the man of many words, Jeff Stoltenberg, <laughs> for the outstanding service to the citizens of the city of Aberdeen. little inside joke from earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again for your time. Well, thanks to the Exchange Club, and uh, thanks uh, for the contribution to the city uh, to, by the two winners, and by everybody in the department, certainly, but uh, it's nice to have some uh, notoriety for a couple singled out, so. Can we have them come around and shake your hand? I guess we have done that in the past. Traditionally here, we have you uh, come by and shake the hands of the uh, council members. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. Okay, our next item on the agenda is uh, old business. Uh, we had first reading uh, last week of the uh, ordinance 1811.02, revising the uh, uh, chapter 36 regarding park closing hours. Any changes from the? Uh, no comments uh, received, Mayor. I did again want to clarify with the council that the uh, that in uh, the current. Uh, ordinance violation of uh, power of attorney fine amount is $120 if you're caught in the in the park doing Move approval. Do. Okay. Thank you. Uh, motion business and second by Rux for uh, second reading and final adoption. Questions on this at all? Carl. Council Member Remley. Aye. Ronane. Aye. Lunsman. Aye. Slate Hansen. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Bunsness. Aye. Olson. Aye. Rux. Aye. Mayor Leveson. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Uh, next is uh, items A through E on our consent calendar. Moved. Second. Motion Ronane and second by Remley. Questions on any of those? Uh, the vacation for the right of way that's unused, currently unused, no plans for <coughs> Lancelot Drive North. No. Okay. It's dead end street. Okay. Other questions? If not, all in favor of approving those five items and say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. 
Uh, item six under new business is uh, ordinance 181101, ordinance revising chapter 26 of the city code relating to public nuisances. And uh, I have been made aware that uh, council member uh, Johnson has some amendments that he's going to offer. So what I will do is uh, we'll get a uh, motion and a second to open this. And then do you have some opening comments before we, or Brett, you? I can make some. Okay, why don't you do that and then we'll get a motion in a second and, and then I will uh, uh, accede to Alan's request to uh, make some amendments. Sure. This uh, ordinance amendment was initiated by the number of complaints that we've received over the years from people concerned with uh, vehicles parking in, in people's front yards. Uh, I get several hundred a year and uh, my staff and, and Ron sat down and thought maybe we could come up with an ordinance that we might be able to try and solve some of this. Um, what we did is uh, got a model ordinance from Minnesota to kind of help open the discussion a little bit. And uh, from the looks of Facebook, the discussion has been opened. Um, uh, there's several things within that model ordinance that I don't care for. And I think with the amendments that uh, Council Member Johnson has, I think that'll take care of the concerns I have. And hopefully it can take care of some of the concerns the public has as well. All right. With that, then, uh, I would request us uh, a motion and a second, and uh, then that would leave us open to uh, amend it if necessary. I'll move. Second. Motion, Remley, and second uh, by Rux. Alan? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, and let me say thanks uh, for a couple of things. First, to Mayor's column that ran in the American News and is posted online. I thought it was very useful and triggering uh, conversation. I thought the tone of it was very fair um, because we're tasked with really uh, answering one question, you know, how do we want Aberdeen to look? And so uh, also I would say thank you to all of the uh, residents who jumped in and had thoughts, uh, con constructive criticism, suggestions, ideas about the ordinance as it was shown. Um, there was a lot of feedback and uh, we have copies of that here on the council. Um, you know, um, the suggestions that I'm bringing forward are um, based on my feeling that, you know, I have kind of a libertarian view. Um, sometimes the government is best that governs least, right? And um, a couple of these sentences in subsection I thought were maybe a little overreach and unnecessary. And so uh, if you're looking at the ordinance, and uh, that would also, you know, for people who are watching or who will be reading about this uh, later, um, subsection 18 has the first sentence, um, which we're going to keep, but with a, a definition added uh, as to clarify what does it mean that parking or storing any vehicle, camper, trailer, or watercraft outside in the yard area is adjacent to a street and on the lawn or ground surface other than on a paved or gravel parking surface or driveway area would be um, in violation. Um, so I, there's a definition that yeah. uh, our attorney can present. And I apologize. I was going to pull this up, but I see that I'm having difficulty. For some reason, my screen is not coming on. I do uh, have it here. So but I it's not coming on for everyone to oh, see sure. anyway. Can but you duplicate the screen? Perhaps it's a deal where you have to duplicate it. Too, well, it should automatically do it. I don't know why it's not doing it. So uh, anyway, uh, as I understand, the uh, Councilman uh, Johnson's <coughs> amendment, it would be a deletion of the second sentence in subparagraph 18. There we are. There it came. Good. Uh, so a deletion of the second sentence, a deletion of the last sentence, and then an addition of this language at the very end, a uh, definition of yard area adjacent to a street means the horizontal distance between the right-of-way of a street to the foundation of the primary structure on the lot. Okay, let's get a, a that's a motion, I assume. Yes. That's a motion to amend. Let's get a second for second. that, and then, Ellen, I'll have you explain why you did this. Yeah, certainly. Second by Rux. Yep. Um, my concern is that we have diagrams here uh, that we're privy to as a council, and so we see this one uh, shown on the screen here. Uh, but the people who are going to be... Uh, you know, bumping up against this ordinance in the future will not have access to this. And so we need to be more specific. Um, um, I'm deleting that first sentence there, uh, the second one under subsection 18, um, because there are situations, and I've even had one personally, where 
uh, having three teen drivers all at the same time, spaced a couple years apart, and it's easy to have five vehicles. Um, I think as, as long as we have other ordinances in place that uh, do obligate us to have uh, a vehicle licensed and in good repair or just not a junk vehicle stored, um, that this is unnecessary. Uh, there are people who contacted me who have similar situations even now. And so this is, um, I think, um, a little bit of infringement on people's right, if they have space on their driveway uh, off the street, to park five vehicles or more if that's necessary. Um, the last sentence, the long one there that is deleted, um, in discussing with uh, engineering department, um, just feeling like uh, it's not really a big concern here in our area. Again, this is a model uh, paragraph um, borrowed from another municipality and uh, fishing ice fish houses, skateboard ramps, playhouses typically uh, are not being stored um, in the front yard for a long period of time. So uh, those are some of the rationale for the deletions. And then you can see again the, um, the more specific language there. Um, I think a um, couple things that you know citizens need to understand is first of all this ordinance as we're looking at it tonight already existed and what we're doing tonight on the council is um, updating it making some things a little bit more suited to our moment our time um, Brett did an impact study so that we could be objective and understand um, how serious or how common the problem is of vehicles parking in the front yards um, and Brett, can you just uh, recount what those numbers were for the citywide? When in, in the south part of town, there was 182 residents that had vehicles that would be violating this. Uh, north portion of town had 58, so it's a total of 240 residences. Now, that was within the last couple of weeks. Sure. So you know that people's boats, campers, some of those things are already in storage. Um, so it's, it's, it'll be different come summer than it is now. Yeah, and I would add to that um, that these counts were taking likely during the hours of 8 to 5 when code enforcement officers uh, do most of their operations. And uh, there would be some vehicles that uh, might even be added to that total because they would have been at a place of employment uh, during the day. And so, you know, talking about what is government overreach, are we doing too much here, um, I also feel that citizens, you know, all of us have a responsibility to discipline ourselves and, you know, make sure that we're not... Um, causing some of these hundreds of complaints about appearance of the front yard, and I think that's important. Do you mind if I, Mayor, may I ask a sure. question? Um, so I see you've defined yard area adjacent to the street, but then it looks to me like up above, you deleted any language that refers to that. Do you even need that definition? It's in the very first sentence. Very first Is sentence. it in the first sentence? Okay. Yeah. This thing was moving around and I never, I, for a while I couldn't <laughs> see the first one. who was doing that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then if, the, if you're going to have definitions, should the definitions be in section 117, which is where the other definitions are? My, my response to that, initially I, I had placed it in the definitions, and then I see that that's the only area in this ordinance that the, that phrase is used. And I thought it would be... Hmm. To, to be consistent with, with Alan's concerns, that it would be readily accessible to the people who are looking at that. So, Brett, these, uh, Thank you, for the you, you say you've talked about these proposed changes and it, it, would, it would do some of what you're wanting to do or all of what you want to do? Or? It, it will. I, like I say, I'm, our main concern was people who were parking in, in the front of a home in the yards and because mm -hmm. the complaints were received. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I agreed with, with, with Alan that. Some of these were a little overreaching for what we were trying oh, to yeah. accomplish. Um, you know, we, we need to know, we asked for Facebook comments, and we, as you say, we got a lot of them. How does this fit in with the tone or of the Facebook comments as you perceive them? I think we've addressed a lot of those uh, comments. Many were um, specifically criticizing the... Um, regulation that you can't store or park more than four vehicles and that really seemed to people like gosh you know who are you to say uh, how many we can or can't have on our property uh, again it's important for um, people who are st stepping in and looking at this to understand that um, if a vehicle is parked on the side you know, anywhere f further back from 
the uh, front, how would you say, um, the front of the home, in this diagram shown by the dark um, dotted line there, uh, they do not have to be parked on gravel, or excuse me, on gravel, yeah, or on pavement. They can be on uh, other surfaces. Uh, we're dealing with the area that is considered uh, from the right of way or front property line up to the beginning of the, the residence. And so that's an important distinction to make. So, you know, really, you know, I served in the past on a, a beautification committee that uh, used to exist uh, for the chamber. Today, I think it's called Partners in, in, um, community, pride. in community Pride. And so this is elevating, I think, the game um, when you have, you know, upwards of 250 homes where you have um, what many people would consider kind of a blighted situation where you're parking on the front lawn. It is kind of depressing. Uh, if any of you have had that, I've had that situation in other cities where I've lived. Um, it does have an effect. It can be a ripple um, where it even becomes kind of contagious and other people see it being done and they're willing to do it themselves. Um, so just um, having a little bit of civic <coughs> pride and abiding by uh, a tweak to an existing ordinance is what <coughs> I uh, see us doing. And I think this does address by removing two of those that were kind of seen as egregious regulations, uh, it addresses those and backs off a little bit and makes it a reasonable regulation. Questions, comments on the proposed amendment? You know, I appreciate your efforts, Alan. I, I, if, uh, I still think this is overreaching in paragraph 18. I mean, I think um, um, you know, I, I was talking to, to Jennifer on the way here about, uh, about a, a home that, I, that I'm acquainted with where they keep a trailer that, is, that isn't on anything paved, and they keep the trailer, and it's, and it's adjacent, I guess, to, to a street, so it would be violative, and it looks just fine. Um, and I, I think this may be like, this may be like pornography. We may want to, we may want to make uh, pornography illegal, but defining it is difficult. And, 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 and being able to define something that, that looks blighted and looks, uh, looks like nuisance, I think uh, just defies our ability to, uh, to, to properly uh, uh, separate the, the wheat from the chaff. I'm, I'm just uncomfortable with, uh, with his, as far as this uh, proposed amendment to the ordinance is going, even with your improvements, honestly. Mike, you had your hand up. Well, I'm wondering if we need some clarification on an alley. Is an alley considered a street? No. It's not. It's considered yeah. right of way, but not street. Yeah. It's not a street. Okay. Yep. Glenn? Um, you know, thanks to Alan for bringing these. He's, uh, some of the people that talk to me, especially about the car limit, uh, are people, again, who have uh, kids in high school, a work vehicle that they may park on their property as well as their own vehicles uh, for their uh, the parents. So, um, and I also do know that uh, as far as the other parts, there are some legally licensed daycares who have play equipment, playhouses, uh, what would be in this area, in a legally fenced area, um, that uh, what would this do? We would. I was going to bring some accommodation, but this took care of it. So uh, these two take care of not all my concerns, but uh, the majority that I heard from. Okay. Other questions or comments on the amendment? Uh, <clears throat> question for Brett. Have you seen an increase in this type of yes. behavior? People yes. parking in the front lawn? <clears throat> we have. And how long ago do you think that kind of started? Oh, uh, six to eight years, I suppose. <clears throat> it seems people have just over time are able to acquire more stuff. Hmm. And that stuff ends up going in their garage or, you know, people are making more money now and they're buying toys. I mean, it's... Mm -hmm. That's what's creating a lot of this. So if if someone has a, a watercraft or a um, camper, they legally could park that camper or watercraft on the, um, the pavement in front of their garage without any, any issue, correct? Yes, correct. They could also park it on a gravel surface. Adjacent. Right, right. I, yep. yep. Or pull it around back, right? Or yep. pull it around back. Jennifer. So, um, so, Brett, talk to me for a second about the ability of people, if somebody has a boat or another car or something and they already have their driveway there, 
what is their ability to come in and get permission to extend the driveway into the yard? What if somebody decides, you know what, I want to have 10 cars, so I want to pave my whole front yard? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to let Robin answer part of that. The, th this has become an interesting thing of late in uh, requests from people to be able to extend widthwise that driveway area because it does get into conflict with some of our parks and rec uh, things related to, uh, I think it's 90% Ron, yes. of the front lawn area. And so there have been decisions to deny extending the width based on the fact that you will no longer have the green space and that you are not allowed to do anything. In, this, in the case of this particular drawing, the area that looks like garage that's as far as you can go to the right with taking out any of the green space. You can't go further to the right. Okay. You would be go be able to go to the left toward the property line on the left side. So you're you're referencing the landscape ordinance? Yes. 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 Okay, so but how far can you go to the left cuz don't you have to stay 10 feet from your property line? No. no. You don't. You can you go can to, pay the to your property line. line. Right. Okay. Robin, currently within the ordinance for driveways within the boulevard, how wide do you, does the, your ordinance permit them? Maximum 36 feet foot wide driveway that would allow the flares to go a little bit beyond, but uh, would probably be at 39 to 40 widthwise on the flare at the street opening, but uh, on the driveway opening, it would be a maximum 36 feet. Okay. Len, you had a, t I'm sorry, were you, did you have more, Jennifer? I did have Go ahead. just a little bit more. So, um, Brett, I know that I contacted you in regards to a particular property that I drive by on a daily basis where they had parked a vehicle between the curb of the street and their fence. And so, to me, that was offensive because I felt like they were parking it, like, in the public right-of-way, basically. And so... Talk to me about, and apparently I was wrong, that wasn't against the rules because they do it still. Um, talk to me about how the changes to this ordinance will help that stop. Well, as, as the, uh, the, the, the graphic on your screen shows, mm -hmm. the car that's parked along the side street, that'd be the, the, the side lot, Mm -hmm. They would not be permitted to park in that area anymore. Now, if they're in, if they move the vehicle over where it's more behind the home, then it's permitted. Okay. We had to have a cutoff somewhere, yeah, and and we had to use that side of the home as that the cutoff line, I guess. Okay, so in that in that case, you're not using the property line, or you're not using. Um, no. You're not using the property line. You're using the side of the house, but. There's no discussion here of right of way. It's just the property, or it's just the side of well, the house. If if you the definition that Ron had, uh, the yard area adjacent to the street means a horizontal distance between the right of way of the street and the foundation of the primary structure. So in essence, bring that picture up again. Which, there. So in essence, from where the right of way is to where the foundation of that home is. Okay, so it is from the right of way, but, um, but it, the one that I saw didn't have, they don't have a sidewalk, so. Wouldn't matter. So where's the right of way in a situation where there's no sidewalk? Well, the right of way is. It's still the same distance, right? right? Yes, yeah. it's from your property line, in essence, Over. to your home. Okay. Okay, thank you. Lynn, you had something you said? Yeah, I just uh, need a point of clarification because I noticed this this afternoon when I drove by my neighbor's house. Recently, he put in grass pavers, whereas he put in a sand bed, and then he put in these paving bricks where they have openings in them, so then he could plant grass in it. So when you drive by, it looks like the lawn, but actually it's a, a portable surface that will hold a vehicle. And so mm -hmm. I guess when I look at your definition... 18 does that include porous payment or is it can only be gravel and asphalt or concrete? Okay, now this is a sample of what I'm talking about. I, I guess from my understanding it would include those and I don't know of very many of those that are in town because that's a, an expensive thing to put in. Well I just had one. So you would include you mean would be allowed? It or would or? be allowed. Okay. Because it's I, I would consider that as a, a solid pavement. Now there again 
if somebody gets you know rode up because they don't they're they're parking in their grass and they say well we're on pavers you know, we'd have to go check but I would classify that as you know parking on hard surface. <clears throat> Other questions or comments on the amendment? Well, I, I appreciate Ellen's um, uh, amendment here. I think it, it cleans this up considerably. Uh, the struggle I have is you look at the pictures of, you know, what was presented to us, and it does look terrible when you have people parking their vehicles in the front yard. You can understand why neighbors um, are are talking to us about that and want, wanting something done. Um, I'm I'm going to support this first round, and we'll see where it goes. Second round, if there needs to be some adjustments, I would ask, you know, Rob or anyone else that you know is not um, comfortable with this. What can make you comfortable with it, and maybe we can come up with some some additional language that helps. Okay, other comments on the amendment? Uh, if not, we have a motion and a second to make the changes indicated on your screen. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Brings us back to the uh, discussion of uh, the rest, which includes the parking part and considerable other stuff. Comments on that? Mike. Hey, I, um 26118C3, uh, appliance, fixtures, furniture. Um, I, the way I'm reading this, you're not allowed to have lawnmowers, tillers, garden equipment out in the yard longer than, what was it, wasn't there an hour to that? They have to be stored in a building. Um, I have a little issue with that. I think that during seasonal uh, activities, it's it's not that unusual to see garden equipment, lawnmowers, out in the yard area. Um, I don't want to create a situation where we're forcing people to have to build storage sheds on their property or add on to their garages. Um, not all people have the luxury of having a two or three stall garage plus a storage building in the in the rear yard so I, I'm I would like to see something more seasonal uh, related to that would you uh, would you like to just start crossing off the items that you don't think should be in there that, that that's the existing that's ordinance. existing, that's ordinance. existing ordinance. Ordinance. Yeah. it's not something we that, that we're just proposing that's existing but it's not to say it can't be exactly. It's not to say we can't amend as well. Yeah, we'll enforce whatever the, yeah. the, the council adopts. But I yeah. just wanted you to know if that was currently existing. Okay. I had a person in our yard that I drive by that had a lawnmower sitting in the yard with a for sale sign on it for most of the summer. You should have bought it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and. Probably not very many people are aware of, of this ordinance and don't complain, or maybe it doesn't bother them. Or maybe it isn't enforced a lot. Some of it is, isn't is necessarily enforced. You know, if there's a lawnmower that's for sale, we're not going to be climbing on somebody to get them to remove it unless somebody complains about it or they don't mow around it or something. Is this something that, that is just a tool that you have that can be used if this is really abused? Is yeah. That, is that kind of the thinking behind this one? No. We try not to be heavy-handed, contrary to what some right. people think. We don't. Yeah. Yeah, but I can, appreciate. Mike's yeah, can you go along with that, Mike? If if that's if, if that's the approach to it, so. yeah. I'm okay with that. Other questions or or comments on uh, the rest of the proposed ordinance? Yeah, um, I have a real problem with the word "disused." A real problem with that because I don't. I, I mean, I personally, um, if "disused" stays in here, I vote against this thing. Um, because disused to me just makes it too easy for somebody to go in and say, oh, well, that looks like it's disused. I mean, I can tell you if disused is in this, I'm going to get people calling on me because I break several of these rules when you use the word disused because I've got, I've got some landscape materials that have been laying in my yard for probably three months. Those are disused. My husband just hasn't got them out of there yet. So call tomorrow if we... Blame the husband. <laughs> yeah, okay. well, I'm going to. 
<laughs> it sounds <laughs> like a... Uh, here in landscape materials. But seriously, yeah. I mean, it just... That word really bothers me because abandoned, discarded, let go, cast aside, thrown away by its owner, n or is not being used for its intended purpose. So that's where it gets too great for me. Um, who gets to determine what its intended purpose is? If I want a pile of landscape bricks on my front yard and that's how I intend them to be used, I should be the one who gets to determine that's how I intend them to be used. And these photographs that were included with this, I don't know if you can pull those photographs up, but seriously, those made it worse for me because those are things that I would never expect somebody to be called in on a health public nuisance for. They're Ron, just Ron, way over you, the top uh, for me. Ron, could you uh, help us with some definition sure. here and a, an application of a word? Sure, I will, uh, I will confess right now that I actually drafted that language in the disused section by looking at definitions of abandoned and discarded um, in the dictionary. And I thought that by pulling that and using a single word instead of abandoned and discarded, as you'll see in other, other items that were, that were removed throughout, uh, that I was simplifying it, making it cleaner, that we would just use a single word to embrace these various uh, terms rather than keep introducing different terms. Um, and so that's why I, I took uh, and, and crafted that definition of disused. Um, in fact, it's interesting for those of you who like these processes that I, I spent quite a bit of time just trying to find the right word. And that seemed to me to be the best word um, having said that, if, if the council is inclined to, to delete the disused definition, then I would suggest then that you also reverse some of these other changes that you're seeing in one, uh, four, five, uh, as well. It seems to me the, the, the key to that paragraph is not the word disused. It's the phrase appears to have been which would give Brett and ultimately whoever was looking at it an opportunity if somebody complained about Jennifer's yard to, to ask Jennifer is that disused and if she says no and there's a good reason then it's not a violation yeah. right yep you know, it the the definition itself calls for a subjective judgment and it does. And we have something like this, and, and, and we visit a property owner, and, and we have concern about something that's in their, in their property. Say it is is landscaping block. And, and we ask them, are, are you using these, or is this something that you need to discard? What, what's your plan for them? Well, in you know, a couple months, I plan on doing this or this is the project I've got going on. Okay, fine. You know, then we move on to the next, you know, the next nuisance. Like I say, we, we try not to be heavy-handed. That's not our goal. But sometimes somebody says, well, I'm not going to do anything with that. I don't know what else to do with it. Then we have them get rid of it. And I really do appreciate that, Brett. And I know, um, I know that you know, the folks in your department are, are working hard every day and responding to complaints and responding to them in a very reasonable manner. Um, the thing for me, and again, I'll go back to those photos, I just... I looked at those photos and I thought, wow, that's, you know, that's somebody who's living in a house and maybe renting the house, maybe not, you know, but they don't have the time, maybe they don't have the energy, maybe they don't have the financial ability to keep up with their lawn care in the same way that I might expect my own lawn care to be kept up with. So I don't know how I can reasonably write an ordinance that tells somebody that just because their lawn care desires are different from mine that I get to call City Hall and say hey I don't like the way they take care of their lawn so I want you to go over and tell them that that landscaping block that's been there for five years needs to go you know I just I mean and honestly, did I miss I something in the pictures that I, well, I, I don't know. I don't Maybe see look what at you're the talking pictures about. again. Mike, you've had a lot of experience with this, with with getting calls where you would have to go and say, "Yeah, that's a violation." Yeah, it isn't. You know that that word really caught, got my attention the first time I saw it. I did. I'll be honest with you. I didn't like it. 
I, I would much rather use the word discarded which really is, is the same thing, and people understand that, I think, much, much more uh, than, than disused. Does that fit all the places you change it, Ron? Mm -hmm. If discarded is substituted for disused? Well, again, the, the word discarded was also being used in concert with abandoned, was being used in concert, I think, with uh, let go, waste. Um, so I tried to use a single word to cover all of those words. Clint? Hey. Uh, Rob had his hand up oh. first. I'm going to vote against this, but I think the use of the word disused I think is, is well, well suited. I think it's well defined. Um, I, I think I, I understand Mike's point that uh, the public isn't going to know what that means unless they look at the ordinance, but you know, that's true with so much of what we do. I, I, think, it's, I think it fits pretty well. I've had uh, what? 14 years, Brett, uh, of uh, experience with uh, res responding to people who have responded to what your people have done, and it's just really rare where, as you say, your people get heavy-handed and and where they where they have a subjective criteria that they apply it irrationally. I and I I have no problem with the word disused. I have full confidence in our people to to uh, deal with it. Well, you know, like I'm sitting here looking at you know a lot of the stuff it's talking about. Unused refrigerators, unused cars, unused campers. You know, I mean, there are sections in here who, that they do talk about, you know, paper, rags, trash, garbage, clothing, tin cans. I mean, it, to me, it's like stuff you're not planning to use. So if it's not disused, it could be unused or not planning to be used. But is that like one rag then laying on your yard? Or well, like I, I've been I've been in some yards where there's 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 a lot more than one. So Jennifer, um, did you have a uh, well, do you have a an amendment in mind to if you want if you're not happy with that word in there? Yeah, my amendment is my proposal is to remove the word disused. Well, there needs to be something there in front of the word means, unless we eliminate the whole uh, definition. Mm -hmm. Yep. I want to eliminate the whole definition and take it out of the ordinance. I'll second that. Okay. What does that What does that do to the structure of the ordinance? If If uh, just as a point, just as a uh, as a point of procedure, just to see if this amendment well, as can it, function within the structure you have. That phrase "disused" is not otherwise used, or is, would not otherwise be be defined, and so the code enforcement would be required to to use that, to interpret that disused language as it exists throughout the rest of the document. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, well, uh, I wanna, just want to be sure, is that? I want to remove it from the whole document. So in all places where it's used throughout. So what word do you, then we'll need another word to substitute it. So do you want to go back to the original? To revert, right? Yeah. yeah. The original wording, like in sub subsection four, abandoned and discarded refrigerators. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So but every every what you want to do is take every place that Ron substituted the word disused and eliminate that substitution and go back to what was there before. Yes, I would be much. Does that work, Ron? That. that works. Okay, and the, and you seconded that. I did. Okay. Uh, comments on the motion. I'll I'll give you a good example <laughs> of of how that could. Uh, be a, a problem. Someone has a camper in their backyard and looks like it's been sitting there for a couple of years. You know how you can tell. And uh, so you stop and talk to them. Are you using that? Well, I haven't in the last couple of years, but I'm gonna. Well, it's not licensed and you got to make sure the tires are up. So as long as they license it, keep the tires up, it looks okay. Even though if they're not using it, they're in violation. I, I have a problem. I don't. I don't. Brett, I, Brett, I have a question. Would, would this amendment materially change the way your people function? No. Okay. Well, then why are we changing it? Well, so, I think what well, what that's just to clean it up. Yeah. I mean, just to clean. If it you don't up, like the word, that's why we would be changing. Yeah. If you use you read the definition, it means that any item which reasonably appears to have been dis abandoned, discarded, let go, cast aside, or thrown away by its owner or possess possessor. And the only part I don't agree with that is not being used for its intended purpose by its owner or possessor because 
maybe they want to make a planter out of the refrigerator. I don't know. Just to just um, to clarify, Brett. <laughs> but Brett, when I know, when I asked that question, that. I meant would the amendment strike that? Would the amendment would change? Would, would having the amendment or or leaving the word disuse would that really affect? It, it wouldn't. It, it, it <coughs> so you're fine with for it me either it way. Clears it up. I'm fine either okay, way. Okay, that's what I was trying to get at. Yeah, I mean, but for me, it's like. I mean, if you sit there and read that, yeah, I mean, abandoned, but it's a pretty clear definition of what disused, you know, means. And he's just trying to lump four words into one word. It doesn't mean that, oh, if you have that pile of landscape bricks and you're going to use them or that camper that you're going to plan on using, as long as it's licensed and tires are up, who's going to know if you're using it or not? And the weeds are mowed around it. No one knows. I know a lot of people who haven't who have campers who don't camp one year due to health reasons or whatever, and it's not disused. But I think, like I say, I mean, to me, that I mean, that definition, you know, is pretty, pretty clear. I mean, whether we like the word or not, I don't think it's irrelevant. I think it's just trying to combine four things in this ordinance into one word. Other, other comments on the motion to amend, Jennifer? Well, could you, um, sorry, could you go back down to the photos um, the very end of the photos. So most of the photos that we got were of cars, but here. So this one is scaffolding. Um, yeah, okay. Here's the last photo. Okay, so yeah. So that's, you know, that's some volunteer trees that are growing up. I mean, is that really a public nuisance? Um, this, is this really a public nuisance? I mean, I wouldn't want to live next door to it and look at it all the time, but... Boy, that to me doesn't rise to the to the level of public nuisance. Um, go, yeah. If you'll just go up to the next one. Oh, I'm sorry. Up. Oops, I'm sorry. Yeah. So that's the scaffolding. Where's I don't. This, where it's right there. Oh, right there. Oh, yeah. I, see. I mean, I don't. I mean, to me, though, if he says, no, I'm using that because he owns a business, he's just store and hasn't had to use it. But it's sitting outside. So it, but it's not disused if he's is, using it. What was the purpose of including this photo? Was it to uh, depict the problem of foliage growing? Yes, as volunteer. Yeah. Yeah. It was the trees. Yeah, it wasn't the. Yeah. Right. it wasn't the scaffold. It wasn't the scaffold. Okay. okay, so what about the next one then? What was the purpose of this one? The pile of we're we're, we're kind of getting disused away from the uh, from the, the amendment pile of disused stuff, yeah. right? Okay, so that's what I saw was the scaffolding in the next one. So I saw things that I thought were falling under the disused, which to me don't, in my opinion, do not reach the level of public nuisance. So that was my point in wanting to look at these photographs. Um, okay, art. Well, we we're, we're talking about the definition, not whether it's a nuisance or not, but how we're going to describe it. Yes. Okay. And so I'm is using the photographs uh, as examples of why I think that that word is too broad. Okay. Other questions, comments on the amendment? Uh, if not, then we have a uh, motion to uh, take out all the work that Ron did to, uh, <laughs> to change descriptive words in there and substitute the word disused for them and go back to the way it was. Does that fit the motion? Roll call, Carl, please. Councilmember Rimley. No. Renane. No. Lundsman. No. Slate Hansen. Yes. Johnson. No. Bunsness. Yes. Olson. Yes. Rucks. No. Mayor Leifson. No, I'll join the majority. Could have, you know, as Brett said, either way it works, so I'm fine with it either way. But uh, the no's have it, so it stays uh, the way it is. Uh, questions and comments then on the uh, the ordinance motion. If there are none. Carl, we have a motion and a second for first reading of the ordinance as amended this evening. Roll call, please. Councilmember Ruggs? Aye. Olson? Aye. Bunsness? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Slate Hansen? No. Lundsman? Aye. Ronane? No. Remley? Aye. Mayor Leifson? Aye. Motion carries. 
And we have at least one more week for comments from the public if they are so inclined. Uh, next item on the agenda is for a possible second reading, or first reading, uh, ordinance setting salaries. Carl. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is the ordinance that we do every year to uh, set salaries for the upcoming year for all the defined positions. Um, are there any questions? You know, I'm going to ask exactly the same question I asked last year. So when I go through this, how do I know, other than I can guess, whether somebody's, uh, somebody's is receiving a wage hourly or a salary annually? So is, uh, you look at some of these, uh, there ought to be two lists, Carl. There ought to be a list of hourly wages and, uh, and annual salaries, because I think this is... It, it used to be bi-weekly and... Yeah, and hourly. Yeah. <laughs> and that, you brought that up last year, and I was going to change it, and I failed to and do I, that. I will vote for it. Will it will be on second reading. I was going to say, can we correct it? It will be on second okay. reading. Thank you. So, can we get a motion for first reading? Moved. Second. second. Motion running. Second by Bunsness. Any other questions? Roll call. First reading, please, Carl. Councilmember Remley? Aye. Renane? Aye. Lunsman? Aye. Slate Hansen? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Bunsness? Aye. Olson? Aye. Rux? Aye. Mayor Leveson? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, item C, uh, no one here to uh, oppose a, an application for a one-day on-sale liquor license for Avera St. Luke's Foundation's Deck the Halls event. Need a motion for that. Move approval. Second. Motion, Remley, second by Lundsman. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. no. Motion carries. Item D is a request for temporary placement of a fundraising goals sign on uh, 6th Avenue for the Journey Home. Move to approve. Second. Motion Johnson, second by Bunsness. Questions about this? All in favor then say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item me a work order between the Department of Transportation Clark Engineering for preliminary engineering related to the 10th Avenue Southeast Bridge. Robin. We received a big grant for this, uh, for the 10th Avenue Bridge. Uh, this is basically just the DOT asking us to concur with their decision to move that ahead. This is just preliminary engineering. This does not give us the grant to actually do the work for that project. Move approval. Second. second. Motion, uh, Rux, and second by Olson. Any questions of Robin on this? All in favor of approving that agreement, then say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Uh, item G, bills presented for payment, Northwest Energy Utilities, 18,360. Oh, Oops, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Sorry. Uh, Similarly, this is uh, an agreement with South Dakota Department of Transportation for railroad crossing signal. Robin. Okay, we have uh, the two crossings at uh, 8th Avenue and Roosevelt, real close to the intersection. The crossing improvements have been done for the actual materials. We, we will be uh, doing medians for those as well here in the next year. But in addition to that, this is for the signals portion. And we will be responsible for 10% of the cost. Moved. Second. Motion running second by Remley. The approximate cost, Roosevelt, 18000 8th Avenue signals, 24000 Questions? All in favor of that one, then say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. And now item G, bills for payment, Northwest Energy Utilities, 18369 uh, a number of merchant fee charges uh, for finance office to ETS, $1,500. Parks and Rec to Dakota Bank, $5,000. Plug and Pay and Infotech to Parks and Rec, each $1,000. NVC phone charges for November 82. Verizon Wireless phone charges the airport, 31. Uh, bid Revenue Disbursement, 18815 J&K Mowing Weed Abatement, $25. Uh, Brown County 19 Project Work Payment to Ferguson Waterworks, 33162 and to Ferguson Enterprises, a uh, switch water cutoff, a water cutoff switch, $167, and lab shipping cost payment to cross country freight, $95, and October CVB occupancy tax, $31,989. Move approval. Second. second. Motion, uh, Rux and second by Bunsness. Questions any of those bills? Carl? Councilmember Rux? Aye. Olson? Aye. Bunsness? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Clay Hansen? Aye. 
Lundsman? Aye. Ronane? Aye. Remley? Aye. Mayor Leeson? All right, motion carries. Item H is payroll November 11th through 24 in City Share of Social Security, Old Age and Survivors Insurance, Retirement, Health, and Life. So moved. Second. Motion, Ronane, second by Remley. Carl? Council Member Remley? Aye. Ronane? Aye. Lundsman? Aye. Slate Hansen? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Huntsness? Aye. Olson? Aye. Rux? Aye. Mayor Leeson? Aye. Motion carries. Lynn, do you have anything today? Uh, yes, uh, I have one item I'd like to speak about briefly. Last week we had some in-depth discussions concerning arterial roads and uh, perhaps uh, looking at uh, future improvements in a different way. And, and the, one of the ways that uh, Robin talked about was to uh, consider rehab versus reconstruction. But then he also said a critical component of that would be what kind of, what were the utilities, were they in a life cycle where the, if you did a rehab, it would be okay versus needing to have them be reconstructed because we were doing reconstruction whereas we were shortening the life cycle to do a roadway improvement. We also briefly talked about uh, West Melgard Road and East Melgard Road where no utilities exist within that roadway section and would the city uh, consider uh, putting in utilities and assessing it at a later date. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is I'll be meeting with the department heads because there is no mechanism for us to do that right now to uh, when I talk about s uh, special assess at a later date, I'm talking about years later. I'm not talking about within the immediate time period of a particular year. I'm talking about whereas, uh, let's say that we front the cost of water and sewer improvement under Melgar Road, and then uh, five years from now, a subdivision comes in. We don't have a mechanism under current ordinances that allow us to go back and assess that cost at a later date. Now. In our research, it looks as though Sioux Falls has done a mechanism where it's called impact fees. But with impact fees, then they ha had to hire specialists to come in and, and do a link analysis as to the fees in relation to benefit. And so it's a lot greater project than simply saying we'd like to do this. And so we'll start some initial research. And as we go forward, we'll find out what's going on. Matter of fact, I'll probably contact the consultant that Sioux Falls uses to find out what kind of cost was associated to them doing that impact. But we're going to start tomorrow with the preliminary discussions with this. And so I don't know if we're large enough to, you know, do significant impacts where it carry the cost. I could see, you know, we within our ordinance it allows oversizing, but most of the oversizing is the nominal cost when you're talking about going from a 10 inch main to a 12 inch main, when you start talking about carrying the cost of water and sewer, then that becomes significant. So even though our desires might be there, the practicality of carrying a large mm -hmm. project might not be possible. That's, that's a good point. There's, there's a certain level of inevitability in Sioux Falls that makes it a lot more practical for them to go ahead and spend the money and assume that it's almost certainly gonna happen where we might not be in that position. Mm -hmm. That's all I have at this time. Thank you for okay. the time frame. All right. We have on our agenda an executive session, and we'll uh, also point out that uh, uh, we will uh, uh, come back to public session following that executive session for possible action at that time. So I need a motion to go to executive session. Moved. Motion Slade Hansen, second by Bunsman. All in favor say aye. Aye. aye.
discussion and get the uh, city council meeting and call it to order. And uh, we'll once again turn it over to Lynn. Okay, uh, basically, uh, we go back to uh, we received uh, an offer. Oh, oh, I, I got my papers mixed up here. Not at this point. No wonder. Sorry. Uh, okay. Can we make the offer? The yeah. counter offered something. at 550 approximately a week ago or two weeks ago, and then we received another counter offer of 525, which uh, administration is recommending that we accept that counter offer uh, for the purchase of the old library property. Do we have a motion to accept 525? Moved. Second. Motion bounced in a second by Rex. Questions, comments from the council? No, I, I will uh, just notify the, the uh, paper and uh, those other persons interested that that in the pending any closing and any issues that come up, we have no intention of disclosing at this time the identity of the of the purchaser. Um, once there will be a public notice process, once we're confirmed that the that there is a closing date and everything is hard, then we'll through start that process so that the, the <coughs> public will have notice of who the buyer is at that okay. time. We have a motion and a second to accept uh, the offer of $525,000. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Any other business from the council tonight? Move to adjourn. Second. Motion, Bunsness, and second by Rux. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.